Hi there, and welcome to the third PowerPoint for the Maritime Business College Veterinary Technician Review course. Um, this will be the last of 1.1 Introduction into the Profession, and um, we're going to talk about regulations of veterinary technicians. So, um, the role of a veterinarian um, these are these are certain things that a veterinarian and only a veterinarian can perform. So prescribe, diagnose, prognose, do surgery, and attest to animals' health status. These are strictly done by the veterinary, um, the veterinarian, and cannot be done by a veterinary technician. What are the roles and duties of a veterinary technician? So the veterinary technician role is to support the veterinarian providing animal health care. So the duties of the vet tech shall be performed under the direct um, sorry, under the direction, supervision, and responsibility of the veterinarian. So ultimately, the veterinarian is responsible for you. These duties shall these duties shall be accomplished in compliance with federal, provincial, and local laws. These duties shall not include diagnosing, prescribing, or performing surgeries. The veterinary technician must be knowledgeable in the care and handling of animals, their normal and abnormal life processes, medical and surgical nursing, anesthesiology, diagnostic imaging, and laboratory procedures. So you have to be skilled in quite a few areas, in pretty much every area of the veterinary clinic. A vet, a vet tech who has reached a higher level of skill and understanding in a particular field of veterinary technology is considered a veterinary specialist. So veterinary technicians can specialize in a specific area and um, they often work in specialty and referral veterinary hospitals and in teaching hospitals associated with universities. So different type of specialties that veterinary technicians can do would be cardiology, dentistry, oncology, surgery, emergency and critical care, anesthesia, nutrition, equine medicine, zoological medicine, behavior, internal medicine, clinical pathology, and, cl and clinical practice. So these are all areas where a veterinary technician could specialize in. So what's a technologist? And, and the reason for this slide is we need to compare technologist as opposed to technician. What is the difference between those two terms? So in the United States, um, a veterinary technologist works in positions that may require a greater level of education, for example, a Bachelor of Science, than is required for the veterinary technician. So a project leader, a practice supervisor, a teacher in a veterinary technology program may require a Bachelor of Science or a greater level of education, which makes them a, a veterinary technologist technologist. And in Canada, there's no difference. No difference at all. There's no difference between a technician and a technologist. They both mean the same thing, but we commonly use um, technician. So um, what is a veterinary technician? Basically, we have to obviously graduate from a veterinary technology course. And after that, we're required to complete a national exam before we can be registered. So is frequently required to pay a fee to a professional association. Um, our professional association here in Nova Scotia would be the EVTA, the Eastern Veterinary Technician Association, as well as the NSVMA, the Nova Scotia Veterinary um, Medical Association. We become a part of that and have to pay fees with them as well. And uh, the VTNE, is the Veterinary Technician National Exam, is the exam that we take to become registered. So what is a laboratory animal technician? So the American Association for Laboratory Animal Sciences have established a certification program and they certify the following levels of animal technicians. So assistant laboratory animal technician, laboratory animal tech, or a laboratory animal technologist. Um, the equivalent in Canada to um, the American Association of Lab Animal Science would be the Canadian Association for, lab, uh, for uh, Laboratory Animals, which is uh, called CALIS. And you can see their logo right there. So veterinary technicians have a code of ethics. And very important to follow these from the beginning of your veterinary career all the way to the end. So let's go through those. So vet tech shall aid society and animals by providing excellent care and service for these animals. Vet techs shall prevent, relieve the suffering of animals with competence and compassion. Vet techs shall remain competent through commitment and lifelong learning. It doesn't your learning doesn't end when you graduate. It is constant throughout your whole career. Vet techs promote public health by assisting with the control of zoonotic diseases. 
vet techs shall collaborate with other members of the vet medical profession in efforts to ensure quality healthcare services for all animals. Vet techs shall protect confidential information provided by clients unless required by law or to protect public health. And vet techs shall assume accountability for individual professional actions and judgment. Vet techs shall safeguard the public and the profession against individuals deficient in professional competence or ethics. Vet techs shall assist with efforts to ensure conditions of employment consistent with excellent care for animals. Vet techs shall uphold law, laws and regulations that apply to the tech's responsibilities as a member of the animal health care team. And vet techs shall represent the credentials or identify themselves with specialty organizations only if the designation has been awarded or earned. Therefore, you cannot call yourself a technician unless you are actually a technician. So disciplinary action against um, a veterinary technician could be a technical violation, so like a lapse of license, um, failure to do your continuing education if you were convicted of a crime. Um, you could It could be a substantive violation, so fraud and deceit, misrepresentation, um, animal abuse, working impaired, incompetence, malpractice, negligence, all those things are, um, you can get disciplinary actions. So there's different super types of supervision for a veterinary technician within a hospital, okay? So we work underneath the veterinarian. The veterinarian um, makes all the final calls and we work with them. So there's different types of supervision that we can have. So the CVMA rules and regulations define these three levels as one, we can have immediate supervision. So that's when the vet is right there beside you, okay? So the vet is within direct eyesight and hearing range. So um, we could have another type of super supervision called direct supervision. So that's when the veterinarian is in the hospital, but not right there beside you. So he could be in an exam room doing an exam and you could be out back in the treatment area doing something with your patient, um, but still considered under direct supervision because he is in the building. We could be under um, indirect supervision as well. So um, that's when the veterinarian's not necessarily in the building, but we can still call him on the phone, okay? So we're still caring for that patient and we um, can do these procedures under indirect supervision um, as long as the veterinarian is able to be contacted. So let's talk about different vet tech associations. So our provincial one is called the EVTA, okay? The, it stands for Eastern Veterinary Technician Association and um, works for and with its members uh, presenting a professional image for the veterinary technicians. Our national association is CAT, so the Canadian Association of Animal Health Technologists and Technicians, and um, they uh, their motto is championing an championing animal health technologists and technicians efforts for animal health care excellence through advocacy, awareness, building, knowledge transfer, and relationships. <laughs> 